the ignition, and we have liftoff. Oh, we saw an object that looked unlike anything we'd ever seen before. In fact, we have not seen anything like it since. Since the beginning of time, mankind has been fascinated by the stars and planets outside our solar system. The unquenchable thirst for knowledge is one of humanity's greatest qualities, and it will continue to have a significant impact on the evolution of the species. Our collective inquisitiveness has led to a greater understanding of the cosmos than has ever been possible before. While it's true that our cosmic knowledge is still somewhat restricted, it hasn't stopped us from trying to solve some of its biggest mysteries. Missions like Voyager, launched by the National Aeronautics and Space Agency, have helped humanity discover more about the universe. Two of the most stunning spacecrafts ever launched nearly didn't take off if it weren't for a fortunate confluence of events. It's been 45 years since both probes left Earth for exploration of space, and they're still on their journey. Several scientists are even younger than the Voyager spacecraft, and they're actively working to answer questions about the universe beyond our solar system using the data obtained by the spacecraft. And recently, Voyager 1 discovered an oddity. What exactly is this new discovery? Just where do the probes stand now? What potential problems could these spaceships face in the near future? All of this will be explained in today's video. Damage to a starship is inevitable after it spends 45 years zipping around the solar system. The NASA spacecraft Voyager 1 set a record for distance traveled when it crossed into interstellar space in 2012. It is currently 14.5 billion miles from Earth. While Voyager 1 is still operational, mission specialists have found that it looks to be lost in space. The probe has not entered a safe mode or triggered any additional alarms. A riddle of this nature is to be expected at this point in the Voyager mission, according to Suzanne Dodd, project manager for Voyager 1 and its twin, Voyager 2, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. Both spacecraft are over 45 years old, which is much older than what was expected when the missions were designed. We're also in interstellar space, a region of severe radiation levels where no spacecraft has ever flown. A malfunction in Voyager 1's attitude and attitude control system is to blame for the issue. It appears that the AACS is operating regularly because the spacecraft is receiving commands, acting on them, and sending science data to Earth with the same signal strength as before. Nevertheless, the AACS is sending meaningless telemetry data to the spacecraft operators. The NASA statement does not include any information on when the issue started or how long it will last. According to the organization, the Voyager crew will keep investigating the issue and looking for a way to fix it or get around it. Sending a signal from Earth to Voyager 1 now takes 20 hours and 33 minutes, and receiving a reply from the spacecraft takes the same length of time. The companion spacecraft, Voyager 2, was also launched in 1977, and so far, NASA has heard nothing but good things about it. The mission team has disabled some systems on the twin spacecraft in a bid to conserve power and extend their operational lifetime until the 2025 retirement date. There's a continual flow of particles in a magnetic field from the Sun, and scientists believe that this is where interstellar space begins. According to NASA, Voyager 2 entered interstellar space in 2018. At that time, the spaceship was more than 17.7 billion kilometers from the Sun, the two Voyagers are the only man-made objects to have ever traveled through interstellar space. Two spacefarers have looked at how solar wind, a steady stream of charged particles released by the Sun, interacts with the interstellar medium. They have also provided information on the composition and dynamics of the heliosphere, the bubble of plasma that surrounds our solar system. The heliosphere is the region of space around the Sun that is constantly being reshaped by the forces of interstellar space and is generated by the solar wind. After you cross the heliopause, you'll enter the interstellar medium beyond our solar system. In order to obtain a more complete picture of our solar system and how the heliosphere interacts with interstellar space, NASA said that scientists have integrated Voyager findings with data from subsequent missions. In 2017, scientists reported that Voyager 1 has picked up a humming noise that they believe is connected to the waves detected in extremely small amounts of gas in the essentially empty depths of interstellar space. Nicola Fox manages NASA's heliophysics efforts at the agency's Washington, D.C. headquarters. In a statement, she made this assertion, thanking the Voyagers for their role in expanding our knowledge of the Sun and its influence on the development of our solar system. According to Fox, 
The Voyager missions have been vital in supplying this knowledge and have helped increase our understanding of the Sun and its influence in ways no other spacecraft can during the past 45 years. In order to propel each Voyager, plutonium is used to power the thermoelectric propulsion system. The Voyagers are running out of fuel because the plutonium is decaying and losing its heat. According to NASA, the crew turned off all superfluous systems, including those that were once considered mandatory. Several of these include heaters that prevent equipment from freezing in space. The space agency said the five instruments are still operational, despite the fact that they haven't had their heaters activated since 2019. NASA's engineers are still scratching their heads over how the Voyagers can operate in conditions so far below their design parameters. The further Voyager 1 gets from Earth, the more likely it is that unusual things will start happening to the spaceship. Now, there's a problem with the spacecraft's AACS. This gear not only regulates the probe's orientation in space, but also points the high-gain antenna that interacts with Earth. Engineers have confirmed that the AACS is operating as expected. According to NASA, the data it is sending back is inadequate for explaining the system's behavior. The information may appear to be arbitrarily constructed or does not reflect any probable state the AACS could be in, NASA warned. Apart from that, Voyager 1 is functioning correctly. NASA says it is communicating with the engineering team and gathering the scientific data that it was meant to. Due to the AACS issue, the spacecraft has not entered safe mode, in which most instruments are disabled and only the most important life support systems are given top priority. Because of this, the group is continuing on while trying to find out what's going on. To quote NASA's Voyager 1 and 2 project manager Susan Dodd, a conundrum like this is sort of par for the course at this point of the Voyager mission. Both spaceships have been functioning for about 45 years, which is significantly longer than the original mission planners had anticipated. Interstellar space is a high radiation region where no spacecraft has ever flown, so we have something to contend with as well. Perhaps a new version of the program will fix it. A third option is for the Voyager 1 crew to just adapt. The Voyager crew is used to changing their procedures frequently to accommodate new circumstances. As time passes, the nuclear batteries that supply power to Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 will gradually deteriorate, resulting in the spacecraft gradually losing power. Although several systems on the spaceship have been deactivated, the science instruments themselves have remained functional. Now that they have access to real field data from the Voyagers, theoretical models of the interaction between the heliosphere and the interstellar environment have become increasingly intricate. UAH astronomer Gary Zank says, The type of broad image is that our solar exited from a hot ionized zone and is now a patchy, partly ionized section of the galaxy. An old star or stars in the vicinity likely erupted at the end of their life as a supernova, releasing so much energy that they heated the surrounding environment to the point that electrons were stripped from the atoms. The border of that region is analogous to a beach, replete with surf and ebbing tides. When we travel into a zone with so much disorder, magnetic fields become entangled and can be reversed. The observed turbulence is not like the smooth magnetic fields that theorists love to depict. However, the precise degree of turbulence is method-dependent. From afar, the Voyager data show little variation in the field, while the heliosphere's influence on the interstellar medium causes significant fluctuations at the heliopause. At some point, the spacecraft is projected to break free of the choppy waters and into the pure interstellar magnetic field. Perhaps you're misinterpreting what I meant. In spite of evidence to the contrary, some experts maintain that the Voyagers are still inside the heliosphere. There is no need for the magnetic fields in the heliosphere and the interstellar medium to have exactly the same orientation, says Len A. Fisk, a space plasma scientist at the University of Michigan and former NASA administrator. Fisk and George Glockler, a colleague at Michigan and experienced Voyager project scientist, began developing a model of the heliosphere that expanded its edge by an additional 40 astronomical units many years ago. Even if the Voyager's voices were to be completely stifled, their journeys would still go on. After 16,700 years, Voyager 1 will arrive at Proxima Centauri, while Voyager 2 will get there 3,600 years later. Following then, for millions of years, they will simply continue orbiting the galaxy. They will continue to drift around, intact or not, long after our sun has gone and the heliosphere has crumbled, and even after our little pale blue dot has vanished. One last message could be sent before they go. 
It won't air on the radio, and if it does get heard, the people who hear it won't be human. The information is transmitted using another piece of antiquated media, two recordings, certainly not the generic plastic variety. They are shielded by an aluminum shell and feature a copper core covered in gold plating. The so-called golden records provide photographic and audio records detailing Earth, the Voyager's home planet. The video is 90 minutes long and features music from Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 2 and Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good, together with pictures of children, dolphins, dancers, and sunsets. And there's a message from Jimmy Carter, who was the U.S. president when the Voyagers were launched. We cast this message into the cosmos, it reads in part. We hope someday, having solved the problems we face, to join a community of galactic civilizations. This record represents our hope and our determination, and our goodwill in a vast and awesome universe. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about these astonishing discoveries made by the Voyager 1? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one. Guys in the